Yeah, I'm happy that some people made it here. I'm happy there are still seats free in the team. <laughs> um, I started this very late and I'm a bit tired and it's my thoughts and I think probably go through them and see what we do then. Luca, can you press? Oh yeah, I didn't do this um, pass. I plan to do this there. I think I can do it after this talk, I think. Space, please. So there was some strong feedback from people from the team which are actually not here at the moment. They don't want to discuss now. Maybe define the time for discussion now. Other people are fine to discuss and still the, the, they like the DEPCONF. The view is fantastic. Space, please. Luca? I'd say time, but this is my, please continue. Um, then at night, Phil Hens brought the idea of De DEPCONF in Frankfurt Hahn, which is the airport in close to Frankfurt and has conference facilities, it's easy to reach and would be very different. My reply was space, please, please, look up. Stop smoking crack. <laughs> and to Phil, which Phil replied to. Because <laughs> it can be seen from very different view, angles. Um, who has been to a DEP conf which wasn't good? Wow. Was it in Argentina? No. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so you have. No, I'm. Yeah, good. Yeah. That's, that's you know which one? Uh, I have ideas, but. Anyway, so most people have been only to good got Debcoms, which is great. Who was skeptical about Debcom 13 before coming here? Bit um, who is the next one? Who stayed unconvinced and think this wasn't a good DEPCON? Okay. <laughs> Next. Um, and yeah, this should absolutely not be about DEPCON 13. Um, originally, my slide started after this one. I didn't want to have anything about it, but feedback yesterday made me to add this. As we all experienced, or who has experienced this DEPCON or other, also other DEPCON, our decision making process is quite often way too painful. Um, I think it's because it's not documented, it's not a clear process, there are no clear responsibilities, no way how to make decisions. We all know this. And this is personally perception. Definitely some months I had the impression that the chairs were asked to decide everything. And in the last days or weeks I had rather the impression that the chairs were ignored. And wasn't that good. So <coughs> DEBCONF has uh, Debian has these foundation documents, the constitution, Debian free software guidelines, and also other important documents which define how Debian works. While DEBCONF has just some wiki pages in a manual category, which is something, but very little. Um, and thus different people have different interpretation how DEBCONF works. So they obviously have different ideas how it should work, but also different interpretations about what we agreed, how it shall work. And um, space. Gunnar, I, I shared these slides with Gunnar and Murray and got feedback from Gunnar only, um, that he absolutely prefers decision structure than governance because DEPCONF is Debian and thus we have a governance, which he has a point. The current delegation was done by um, Zach two years ago. Um, space, please. Delegating Gunnar, Murray, and me as DEPCONF chairs. Um, with the text, the main responsibility of the DEPCONF chairs is to act as a liaison between the Debian project and the DEPCONF organization. In that capacity, the chairs will be responsible to the project for the organization of DEPCONF and how Debian resources for example, money, but also the Debian name are used to that end. DEPCONF organization itself does not need to change in response to this new delegation and the informal DEPCONF team is free as it always has been to establish its own structures and decision mechanisms. The chairs are expected to help the team in establishing those things and to break decision ties if and when they occur. 
this is a very um oh, got the term very wise delegation because it leaves many things open um press space please <laughs> i talked with Zuck what he intended about this and he told me that he wanted to spell out that debconf is debian and clarifying who's responsible for debian resource usage and space again please um, yeah, that was very much needed. Clarify that DebConf is Debian and there's no doubt about this anymore. I'm very thankful for this. Oops, Zach. Um, and of course, DebConf is also not Debian. There are, there are differences between, or not Debian, De DebConf works quite different than other Debian projects, but then all Debian projects are in several ways different than the other. Um, so there is still a difference, but it's not on the um, identical or on the... We still are part of the same project, even though we are different sub-projects. And I think probably the DebConf team doesn't really need to be redefined, but rather formalized what it is, because I think we agree that it's fine that these people here or who want to be here are team, but it's completely not clear how to become team member. Next, please. So, idea one, anybody on the list, the IRC channel is on the team. Next. Idea two, formal process to join and leave, for example, public mail to the list, auto acceptance by default, and the chair, the delegates can put this on hold or deny it, and yearly after DebConf, it's cleared by the team or the chairs. And we maintain the list in a public Git repository. Would be one idea. The other is the same, except that it's not auto acceptant, but one existing team member needs to be an advocate. Next. Or instead of chair delegation, how about team delegation? And then the team is free to add more members to it, how they fit. Could be the same with the previous idea, and the DPA can deny those. So there are many different ways to form the team. Next, please. Other suggestions? Which not doesn't, <laughs> yeah. I don't know whether which one. So, you started by stating a problem, which is that making decisions within DebConf is painful, uh, which I agree. Uh, but is this? working towards a solution to that problem? Is that <laughs> the goal that you have in, in talking about the team formation process? I have that goal, but I don't think we can reach it today. Okay. I believe it's, um, this is quite going into the direction of the goal because um, one problem which we had at least in the last round of um, um, discussions um, was that um, there were quite different people in different sessions and um, the same problems um, got reiterated quite a number of times because of this because people haven't been ha hadn't been involved in previous decisions and then the next time um, the made these decisions came up they um, they tried to intervent be um, um, on already made decisions so it's the idea is that if the team was well defined by some mechanism, you could say the team, you would be in a better position to say that the team has decided something. That's true. Or, uh. I have my doubts. I think if formalizing the team membership leads to kind of more of a feeling of responsibility for the team on the side of the members and then there's more uh, continuity in the meetings, then it might be a good thing, but <coughs> the problem Arne stated is more a problem of continuing between different meetings and I don't and I think if we can solve that, the fuzzy border of the team is no longer a problem. I agree. I think defining the team is part of many things we need to do. And Right, so this is something that I had spoken with Holger about um, 
over the course of, of the lead up to, to DC 13 where I was feeling personally that you know I had opinions about things but I didn't feel that I was necessarily a part of the team because I wasn't involved in DC 13 organization and I, I did have concerns about some things but I didn't know what was the right should I even be voting if things are being voted on? Should I be participating in discussions, the IRC meetings? It's very difficult for people to know uh, with the existing setup how much they should participate, how much, how loud they should be. And I think having a clear idea of who's in and who's out means that we have a clearer process of, of making the decisions. Because the situation now is that anybody who feels strongly enough about an issue to make, a, to, to make noise about it effectively moves the needle on where the, the consensus is, and I don't think that actually makes sense to have people who have strong opinions about a particular issue show up and argue it if they're not participating in DebConf team the rest of the time. Um, and I also think that if we have this idea of you are part of the team, it's also social pressure on people who might otherwise just drift away bit by bit to stay involved, to, to you know. So thinking of this in terms of like the Ubuntu code of contact, conduct the idea that you, if you are no longer doing a role, you step down gracefully. Um, and I think, I think having this, this more formalized idea of a team um, helps with ensuring that people recognize, okay, this is, this is a responsibility that I have, um, and if I'm not living up to that responsibility, I should step down so that the remaining members of the team know they, can, they should make decisions without me. Um, and, and in that way, having a more, a, a shared understanding of what the team structure is Whereas right now we have this kind of amorphous group of people who show up on IRC and participate in some meetings or, or others and have the effect of, you know. No. I, I'd, I'd like to stop this discussion now here because I have some more stuff prepared. Um, I also, what I haven't put in here, but what I realized there now, um, it's absolutely vital that we get members, new people, easily in the team. Like Raphael, we didn't, nobody knew eight months before, or maybe two or three people, and he was a super good team member. So it must be super easy for new members to join the team every year. And I really would like to continue, unless you really insist on saying something. Then use the microphone. I have just one suggestion. Alternative suggestion, I don't think we have to discuss it, just that it's noted. We might also want to think about having something similar or the same as the process we kind of established for adding new members to the DebConf team subversion repository, where, which is that each year there should be one admin from the local team that is trusted by the global organization allowed to add local team members. I think this SVN access is derives from the team membership. But anyhow, next slide, please. Let's. <laughs> um, I don't know how many people remember the times when this was the Debian motto. It was in the mid and end 90s. So a rough consensus and working code. And for Debian, it's probably easier because working code is quite easy to define. <laughs> Exit zero. Um, <laughs> next slide, please. So what's consensus? Idea one, consensus is when we all agree. Mm -hmm. Next slide. Consensus means decision by a clear majority. Mm -hmm. Next slide. Consensus means an absence of significant dissent. Maybe that. Next one. Other suggestions. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let me please continue with this. <laughs> or use the microphone, but you don't get it. <laughs> ne next slide. Um, and yeah, this also needs to be formally documented. What does that mean? Because else. Next one. To some people, eight people agreeing, one vocally disagreeing, and two a bit unsure is a consensus. But Debian is a diverse community, so this is not true for all. So we need to document this. Really, 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 really. <laughs> Even if we were, most, we were mostly white males, <laughs> which we are not. 
and we and Debian will change change in future too. So our assumption now, which might work today for a group, will not work in whatever time. Thanks. Yeah, final decisions also. <coughs> um, Debian is the project where Debian via delegates or GR has the final decision power. And that's required by the Constitution 8.3 and 4.1.1. Please read it up if you want to. <laughs> and this means nothing is final. Like the only final thing is death. That is final. In the sense that if you fuck up, delegates or GR might override you. And of course, nothing is final. And there are and there have been many, many final and good decisions. The view on the lake is fantastic. Thank you. Um, and now I have some more random ideas. <coughs> so maybe the term advisory board make, might make things clearer than chairs. Or might maybe redefine uh, really things because an advisor is something else than a chair. And not, no matter what name we choose, we also need to define the procedures and I think. Maybe steering board is better than chairs or ad advisory board. And it's again something different. And then there's also the DEPCONF committee, um, which are those people who were um, entitled to reach the decision where the next DEPCONF will be. And there would also be the option to keep that name. Um, and another idea, which is also could be supplemented, is LCA has ghosts, which are previous organizers who are happy to help running next conf conferences. And they also do, after LCA, directly a handover from, from the previous local team to the next local team, um, to the next team, including some ghosts. So that would mean that whatever 20 people of us, or maybe 10, I have no idea, meet after this step conf or in the next one for one and two days, maybe just have one house here or go somewhere else, whatever details, and plan the next conference. Seems to work well for LCA. Uh, I haven't hit. Well, pick your poison. <laughs> yeah, so that is probably useful, but that doesn't sound like the core issue we want to address. This is about sharing experience. And I think we are not too, too bad at that. I mean, the fact that uh, the next DEPCONF uh, team members uh, are attending the previous one also helps that, like that, for that. It's just a different way to the same thing. Mm. Yeah, it's just an idea, one detail to make things more smooth. Yeah. And no matter what model we choose, the really important part is that everybody understands the same and can live with it, and that future generations will do the same. And this maybe sounds easy. I, I don't think that sounds easy, actually. Um, yeah, but please press space first. Yeah, I think you can press space, space once again. Um, what occurred to me and two minutes ago to end this who thinks or wants to be involved in DEPCON 14 and wants to sit here? <laughs> Hopefully more on the internet. <laughs> so if you go back to the previous slide. <laughs> no, the one before, yeah. So the fact that you state that future generations will do the same, that's Quite strange, because you started by saying that uh, Debian has many different teams with many different decision processes. And I wonder if um, each DEPCONF should not be seen as a different uh, Debian team, kind of. With a, and may, maybe different DEPCONFs require different decision making mechanisms based on, for example, the past experience of DEPCONF organizers about uh, Debian and DEPCONF. For example, next year we have a local team with people from uh, uh, small derivatives who are not very familiar with Debian. So <laughs> um, it <laughs> kind of could raise, no, I'm just joking, um, but it could raise some uh, different, well, 
issues and DebConf where there's a really strong local team from people who don't know Debian very well. Yeah, that is. Which occurred in the past. And then the um, decision making process need, could need to be different in those cases. And I quite concur with what was just said because um, my personal experience from at least the transition between last year's DebConf and this DebConf is there's just a whole different set of people working on the DebConf. And the chairs are like the, the, the thing that connects the different DebConf and that maybe try to get some homogeneity between the DebConf, but in the end, the people doing most of the, the work to make it happen is a completely different set of people. Um, so, as well as I agree that this documenting decision processes and all that, we can also not expect everyone willing to participate in DebConf organization to spend a week reading wiki pages. Although it's good to have documentation, it's also a team of people that maybe know each other, have, have a way of taking decisions or working towards a goal together. But and that is also something valuable in the DebConf organization, I think. But why that, can't uh, you read documentation? Um, you also no, read documentation for packaging. Now I really need to a bit disagree with what you said. I, <clears throat> I've noticed that uh, I, I'm, I have been now to, I think, six, more six DebConf I am at, <coughs> and at the previous years, um, for example, when they had the DebConf at Mexico, the team was even mostly stuffed by the, by the global team, and there are a few local team members, and I'm actually even not that sure that it's good to have a complete reshape of the team for every DebConf. So I think we should try that we have some people involved in all DebConfs, or the people are involved in more than one DebConf, that they share the experience, that we don't need to uh, repeat the same mistakes we, we did before. And actually what I think is really, we should have a governance model which helps us in doing it in the way that we want. So nobody says about uh, you have to read one, uh, one uh, week of documents. However, we should write the documents in a way that they help us to achieve our goals, and that it makes it actually easier and faster and less painful for all involved. And yes, I think it's worth to, to try to do that. Um, and so I, I think we should write more things up, and that the government might be a bit different between different years of DebConf because of, of different people involved is okay for me. However, if we change it, I think we need to agree on it first and then change it. Yeah, that was, he summed up my point quite well. I think we, it should be possible to establish a kind of process or experience things which could apply to many, many DEPCOMs and could save us a lot of redefining and finding procedures and decisions with new team members. It doesn't, I think it must not be spelled out for all details, but I think there are some things which are quite, which are similar between DEPCOMs, like whatever, uh, what do we need for network stuff, accommodations, we talked about this a lot and yeah. I don't think. Oh. Um, but I mean, it's just year, one. Year is a no, no. Let's go and speak. Let's have. I just want to throw in one thing that is, from my point of view, missing. We should think about when defining kind of a governance model, and that is that we have to have a view of what's local and what's global. I think. One year ago, we kind of were, had this idea, let's drop this local team and merge everything into global. And in my personal view, it failed. And the failure, I, I was thinking about this quite a lot, and I think one part of, point of the failure was that, as at that point we had quite a big local team, um, taking everyone from the local team to the global team, and, every, and they were quite motivated by it then, led to just the locals taking over the global team, because we were quite a lot. Um, and uh, at the point where the globals were like um, recovering from the previous DEPCON. And one just, I think just that that's something that needs thinking about. I don't know if, I don't have a solution. I, currently te rather tend to reinforce the local team more than we did in the past and defining areas that are clearly in the competence of the local team and defining things that are have to be done on a global level. Um, 
And one other thing about the consensus slides uh, we should keep in mind is that as it is in real life meetings, I can also observe in our lists and IRC meetings that basing everything on consensus and pushing back votes as far as possible leads to a dominance by those that speak a lot, that feel comfortable to speak, and so, 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 so on, on and on. And I think we should also think about ways to value more the opinions of those that are probably not so comfortable in English and speak less. I like to say two things at least. <laughs> one is that this, the idea to have one team and not local and global team is not a year old idea, but rather something which is five or eight years old. It's really a long topic where we worked on to have one team because there were problems in the past and now that we achieved that better we have new problems. So things changed and what you just described is throwing away experience which I think we must avoid. I'm, I'm sure that the DEPCON 14 team, even if nobody from DEPCON 13 will be, or from previous DEPCON will be there, can do a good conference but I think it will be a better conference if there's some continuity, yeah. And that was the one point. And the other point which I'm having is really that I think there are, it's a very difficult discussion at the moment because many people are not here no, also didn't come to DEPCONF 13. Um, and, so, and also I want to hold myself back now because I've said a lot of things, but I don't think, those are, I don't think the discussion is now leveled. And I don't want to shut, shut down your words, but I'd like to keep in mind that we need, that this is talk and talk is cheap. And Somebody needs to do something. Yeah. Um, Sometime. Yeah. I see. Um, my question is now for the old bees in this, in, in this round. Which experiences do you actually talk about? This is something which came up uh, some, a number of times in, um, in, in the um, underpinnings of some discussions over here, that there have been dis um, experiences from, from, from past that comes which, um, um, which makes joining the local and global team um, worthwhile. So, which, but there was never um, an explicit what experiences are this. For example, the DEPCONF 12 team wanted to sign a venue, was about to sign a venue for which there was no money. Sorry, I'm trying to unwind now and remember what I was going to say um, regarding, oh, so from the DC 14 perspective, I mean, we are, we're looking to put on a good conference and we would like to do that with the, with the help of, of those who've been in DEBCOM for a while and have the experience and, and the, the knowledge of how to run it and also the, the knowledge of how all of the infrastructure works that, that we have that we can leverage to put on a conference. Um, but the other thing that I'm hoping that we can accomplish here is because this year the conference is being run at the local level by folks who have been involved in DEBCOM in the past, which um, for the past few years has not really been the case. Um, which, which is not a problem, but I'm thinking, I'm hoping that um, we're coming from a position that we can, a, as we go along, we can be writing down down the things and, and uh, you know, helping with the documentation problem in order to pass things on for the next year as well. Um, that's one of the, the my goals is, is in, in DC 14 is to be able to provide that for future conferences as well, uh, perhaps at, a, at a, uh, a more systematically than we've done in the past. Yeah, it works. Um, one thing about consensus is that I think, I have the feeling it can work for technical decisions we can, sp we can postpone, like a release. Uh, but DevConf is, is time-based. Is time and um, maybe that's related to how Switzerland works, but uh, we just, we, it's, it's not possible and it has not been possible to postpone 
the signature of a contract or the, 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 the giving out of money indefinitely because then you have counter flames that come back by that postponing and by that I think just taking time to find a good consensus is just it's all fine for us and it's good that we can find consensus but when we have a time-based deadline and time-based things that we have to get out and DEPCONF happens at a specific date, we need to find a way to short these consensus finding periods in a, in a, um, in a situation where people can actually take a decision and go ahead. Um, I'd like to agree quite strongly with DDA on this point because it is time-based. Um, the effect of always requiring a consensus, although we should certainly try to be a, a team that works well together and does things based on consensus, because when you have consensus, people feel better about things. The problem is when you don't have consensus and you don't have a process for deciding in the absence of consensus, the net result is that it drags on, it drains everybody, and everybody feels miserable at the end of it because some people get their way but had to fight for it. Other people didn't get their way and had to fight for it, and it repeats itself over and over again. And so I think it's important, when, as we're talking about processes for DebConf, that we do have a way to efficiently decide in the absence of consensus. And some of this, I think, means also developing more of a cult culture of actively seeking consensus and, and, and you know, understanding what the consensus is and taking decisions that the whole team can support. But some of it is also that you need to have deciders of last resort who will take the decisions when they need to. And I think that's something that has not happened in, in the recent past within the, the DEPCOMF organization. I think that's important that we address. Um, <clears throat> and I, I really think the Word, better, better words than consensus is rough consensus. I don't really think we need to have a total consensus that everyone agrees on the idea, but that at least it, it, that, that one can say, yes, the team wants to go this way. Um, Steve and I, we, I think we both know that we have a lot of discussions where we had had different opinions where we were both the least managers. I don't think, I think ever, any of you have ever seen a friction between us on that topic, but there were discussions and we had a proper way to handle that. Um, and I think that's the same as what is really needed for DEPCONF. It's, we should try to drive to consensus or rough consensus, but if it doesn't work, your right decisions need to be made, and they need to be made fast, but in a way that nobody is hurt, and that we can go on and continue to seek consensus again for the next one, because consensus also means, well, rough consensus means that, every, that the team agrees it and we go ahead with it, and not that just one, someone will, will run around, and the next one is, is going to fight against it, because fighting is even worse than a, a bit of delay most, most often. No, no. Would one of you like a microphone? It was release team. <coughs> so the question was, how did we do that in the release team? So, uh, I think there were two different answers to that. The so one is, uh, I mean, we, we all know that we couldn't, or that we need to come to a common uh, opinion anyways, because there's no need to do it otherwise. So yes, we tried right hard. In, in lots of cases, I said, well, see, I still disagree with you, but I still go ahead or the other way around. So this is one way to go. Um, then there was, of course, not only the release manager, there was also the release team. So when one of us noticed that he was alone in the release team, even though he was a release manager, I said, yes, here, just do it. I don't mind too much. Or in the exceptional case where one of us said, yes, I do mind so much, uh, then mostly other people respect it because um, yeah, we had lots of respect for each other, so it worked. In the last one, we had I one case where we really couldn't agree, and then we, we escalated together to the technical committee for decision. So I, I wanted to make a remark which wasn't about consensus or, or voting, but about decision making. And my experience this year on bursaries was not that we had difficulty reaching consensus, but that there was no body who uh, felt responsible for driving the process uh, enough. I know, uh, Steve is pointing at me and eventually I guess it was me, which is fine, but it would have been better if I knew that earlier. Uh, details. So I, I think when we're thinking about organizing things that it's not just about how we make final difficult decisions, but also deciding who's responsible for getting things done is also important. I'd like, hello? I'd like to comment, you both described how consensus has, is difficult or has problems w before the conference. There's 
to me it's way more difficult during the conference because there's then even less time usually. Um, so I think then this consensus model there needs to be what do we do if we don't reach consensus? That needs to be in there definitely. And I'd like to ask, has anybody watching the talk room one IRC channel? Is there some useful input? And else I would like to end this session because I think we are getting in circles. We have five more minutes left. Um, but I don't think we need to use this five more minutes because we really need to work with documents. And I really regret that I have not put this document on Gobi before the session and then didn't let it happen. So, well, the, did somebody check IRC? Is there any? I, I can forward Maddox agreeing with me. So, uh, uh, Maddox says, I think the important thing is exactly related to what Bremner just said. Conflict prevention is a lot about definition of roles and management of expectations. Um, uh, I think that's one reason we, why we should not just end the session now and go out, but try to follow that and have at least some understanding on how we will actually I reach to a better point. I don't if think there's someone that wants to do proposal or a small group or whatever, or we all should write to the mailing list or, because I fear a bit that we had a nice session now, we had quite some good discussions, but it won't change anything. I th think this will be the case anyway, whether we continue five more minutes or not. There are five more minutes. That's so, no, that, the that point, will not. Point can, is not so, so the point is not using the five minutes here, but what are we doing to continue yeah. this discussion? That was okay, but then let's let's spend this five minutes to talk about this and not about whether we should what yeah, detail sure, in sure. the decision I was process. Probably not clear enough. Uh, and and I, what what you said yesterday that you will after DebConf you will be with, busy with finishing DebConf 13. And so my idea would be to discuss this decision-making process and define it when the DEPCOM 13 final report is done. <laughs> Don't do it now. <laughs> Finish it. Yeah. yeah, so one thing I'm kind of wondering is wouldn't uh, quite a good solution would be to asks the um, DevConf, DevConf chairs actually to make that work of defining, making sure that rules are clearly defined and defining a decision-making process that works with the local team for each DevConf. Instead of defining one that would, that would always be applied to each different DevConf, maybe uh, that's part of DevConf chairs, that should be part of the DevConf chairs responsibility to ensure that uh, this works it's similar to ensuring that uh, I'm not sure how it's phrased in the delegation, but that the uh, budget is used in a sensible way. The release team delegates also decides how the release team works, as far as I know, or other delegates decide how they're. <laughs> they're not. Okay. I, yeah. So, I must somehow um, <laughs> um, put my word against um, the idea of. Um, putting this decision back until the final report is out because that's, in the, the case of the last DevConf, that would have been by the middle of this, this year. By the, when the final report is out or in two months. Better. We have one minute. Okay, I, I just wanted to, uh, I think, relay a complaint from Ganev you will be surprised to hear Ganev complaining. Um, so Ganev says it won't change anything because there's not enough people in the session or at DebConf. Uh, he remarks on the fact that we're missing two chairs and lots of team members. I think this is a good st closing statement. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Enjoy the last day of DebConf. <laughs>